Well, hello, friends, and welcome to this edition of Life Talk. This is episode number 17, and I'm so glad that you're with us. Thank you for your support of this program over the past several months. Uh, your support and your prayers and sharing the videos have been a great help and a blessing to me. Uh, if you've never seen Life Talk before, this is a program where we talk about the issues of life. We talk about our Christian faith. We talk about our careers and the calling that God has placed on our life. Every episode is different because each one of my guests is different, and I am thrilled to finally have with me a family member who I will introduce to you. This is Lisa Jones. Lisa, welcome to Life Talk. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you. What Before about yourself? I am blessed. I am blessed. We had some technical difficulties for those who were trying to tune in the top of the hour, but we have overcome that because we yes, stomped the devil's head and uh -huh. the broadcast is going out. Yes. So in the interest of full disclosure, Lisa and I are family. And yes. here's the connection. Everybody, you all know my wife, Crystal, my beautiful wife, Crystal. Well, her brother, William, married Lisa's sister, Linda. And that's yes. what makes us family. Uh -huh. Now, William... He's home with the Lord now. He left us a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Belinda is alive and well. Yes, she here. is. Here, and I am just—I'm really humbled to be part of the Jones family. So, Aww. Lisa, this is your opportunity. Tell us who Lisa is. Oh my goodness! Well, Lisa is a 51-year-old that loves the Lord that has um, yet, I'm yet learning. Um, I love music. I love uh, nature. I love love. I love people. Um, let's see, there's just, uh, I love communicating. I love, um, yeah. I, Mm. You said something that you love, love. I love love. What does that mean? I love the institution of love. Like mm -hmm. love, it, to me, it cures all. Like where there's love, there's peace. You know, there's there's joy, there's strength, um, there's possibilities, there's um there's sunshine, even on cloudy days. Um, love is resilient. You know, it's that, that God is love, you know. And so I just, I love, I love love. I love um, embracing people. I love, um, love is not just a band-aid, but it's a cure. Yeah. You, yeah. one thing I know about you, you do uh -huh. radiate that. You love people. I do. And you love talking with people and you minister and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, okay. Um, growing up, can you share with us a favorite childhood memory that you have? Oh my goodness. Well, I have to say that one of my most favorite childhood memories is when a bunch of my girlfriend sisters or sister girlfriends, however you want to phrase it, um, would come to the house and we would have slumber parties here. And we, at the time we had, this orange um, sectional and we would put it um, the two pieces together of the sectional and we called it the pit uh -huh. and we all would get in there and watch television and and just have girl chats and share our hearts and laughter and um, it was just a safe place and and I'm grateful to uh, report that eat those same girls that we're in that pit. We're still connected. Look at that. Uh huh. That is a one. That's a wonderful memory. Yes. Um, I have. Yeah, I have memories of childhood. You know, playing fort. You know, you set up a fort and you're playing yes. things down the street. You're playing a lot of ball on the street where I grew up in Philadelphia. A lot of fun childhood memories. Nice. Um, we know mom is still alive. Mom is still yes. with us. But your mm -hmm. father passed. A number of years ago. Yes, 2013. Tell us about Deacon Jones, because I, I never got a chance to meet him. I've heard a lot uh, about him. Tell us who Deacon Jones was. 
I tell you what, dad was the best man that I have ever met. He mm. was the greatest. He was kind. He was loving. He was patient. He was brilliant. And he never met a stranger. Um, he had a way of making everyone feel special, um, regardless of your background, regardless of, you know, um, you know, he, he just was able to see the good mm -hmm. in everybody. Um, like I said, he was tremendously brilliant and he had a way of making even those that had even learning challenges feel brilliant, you know, um, he just, I tell you, he, he loved the Lord. I don't know if I said that he loved the Lord and he exuded that. Um, he was a Sunday school teacher. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sunday school teacher, um, deacon, you said Deacon Jones, he's greatest mm -hmm. deacon I know, um, greatest father. Oh my goodness. And he, he, like my friends that would come to the house, he just became their father as well. You know, um, just, just a lovely man. I miss him. And I, I just, you know, I, yeah. Crystal, Crystal told me some stories of Deacon Jones, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, he was, he was congenial and he was yeah. a happy man and he loved yes. the Lord, but he was also kind of strict too at times. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh -huh. like he ran his house. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the good thing is I'll be able to see him in glory. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know who's watching this. And so as we're getting to know you, I know for a fact you have an amazing singing voice. Thank you. When you to God were, be the glory. To God be the glory. When you were growing up, did you take formal lessons or did that come to you naturally? How did you develop your vocal skills? Well, it started... Um, I started singing, I don't even remember how old I was, but I remember I was very young and I was in the Sunshine Band at our church, which is a, a children's choir. Mm -hmm. And we were under the leadership of Merlene Wilson. And so she kind of got the ball rolling. And um, I, <laughs> I used to sing very nasally and, and she helped to bring my attention to that. Mm -hmm. And um, that made me kind of want to seek help, you know, with, with breathing correctly. And so um, I did, I sought out for uh, vocal lessons and my vocal coach was Jason Palmer. Um, he was excellent. And, um, and then I started singing with our gospel choir. And uh, so I guess it's a bit of both. It, it, it was, a natural thing. It was a God-given gift, um, but it was tweaked by some uh, breathing exercises and and professional help. You've done some recording too, haven't you? I have. Yeah. Who have you sang with? I've sang with Robert Davis and Friends. I've sang with Kim Stratton. I've sang with Donald Lawrence. Um, and I even have my own project out, a CD out on my, you know, a, a solo project. Tell us about it. Okay. It's called His Promise. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it blows my mind that the Lord led me to title it His Promise because I didn't realize that years later. So let me back up. The, the CD was released in 2005. Mm -hmm. Um, I really didn't get a chance to shop it because that same year is when Donald Lawrence reached out to me and I started traveling and singing with him. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of shelved my project, but um, 2007 is when the accident was. And so um, at that time, you know, I mean, it was nothing I could do with my CD. And, um, but that's when I, was leaning on the promise of God, you know, like after, and, and maybe I don't, I may be going too fast. Oh, you just wanted right. to know about the music because oh, that leads because me you're, into, you're, yeah, okay, that right. leads me in, into um, the time of the accident. Mm -hmm. And, um, and at the, you know, I couldn't sing because I had suffered a spinal cord injury due to the fact that we flipped 
eight to 10 times on black ice. Um, but uh, in the hospital, you know, once I kind of came to, um, the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, I was singing. Um, but that was not my reality at the time. You know, it was, I was struggling to breathe. Um, and so, um, you know, to have a dream that I'm singing again, but it felt kind of far-fetched, but I know that God is not, his word is not far-fetched. It's stable, it's right. secure, mm -hmm. it is sure. Um, and, you know, to be able to recall the title of the CD, His Promise, Okay. You know, so before I even needed to lean on a promise, it was recorded, you know. Let's talk about the CD a little bit. Uh, is it is it original music? It is. It's some original music. Um, most original music. Jesus I'll Never Forget is a congregational song that I just kind of um, made my own. Mm -hmm. um, but that I didn't write that. I just rearranged it. Okay. Um most of the songs was written by my best friend um, and she actually produced a lot of the project. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and oh, I wrote a couple of them. I wrote um, Voice and I also wrote Give It To Them. Amen. So is that it, was, yeah. Is it still available? It is still available on all of the digital outlets. Good, there you go. Um, and we're, we'll mention that again at the end of the program because I okay. want to, I don't know if you I, I'm pretty sure I told you this and if I didn't please forgive me but uh, I've written a lot of songs over the years and I've always thought that I would love to do some recording with you I would love that yeah. so Lord willing one day I have some Christian songs that need an artist to express them Oh my goodness, Thomas! It sounds oh, sounds like this is a surprise. I really thought it is. Told you before, but yeah, I have some songs stockpiled, and so maybe we can talk about that down the road because I would love to hear you give voice to wow. some, of the, some of these things. So I I'm glad it. your music is still available. You, you brought up the accident, and we oh, yes. we we do want to talk about that because I, I have to tell you, in all the years that I've known you, uh, you said the accident happened in two thousand and seven. Uh -huh. And I came into your life in 2013. So you're already, you know, many years in. Can you yeah. tell us again what happened with the accident? And as a result, because for folks, if you can't see that, Lisa is in a wheelchair. Uh huh. Um, but we're, we're believing God for her to walk again. Absolutely. She's going to walk again. Absolutely. In Jesus name. So that chair is temporary. Absolutely. That's what, that's what we're believing. But can you kind of walk us through as, as much as you're comfortable telling us what happened in 2007? 2007, February 14th of 2007, my best friend and I were on Route 126, um, which is a rural route in Illinois. Um, we had just stopped at a stop sign and was proceeding, you know, and then the car just spun out of control. There was no excessive, you know, speed, you know, there was no excessive accelerating or anything like that. We just hit the black ice and, and um, we veered into the oncoming traffic. And just as we were about to hit the other car, the Lord snatched my vehicle in the right lane and then um, we got really close to the guardrail on the right mm -hmm. side and we never touched it. Um, and then it seems like once that proceeded, then we started flipping and we flipped like eight to 10 times mm. and we landed on a creek and it was very cold that day. So the creek was frozen. Had it not been frozen, it could have been to my demise because I was pinned in the truck mm -hmm. and the side that I was pinned in was on the ground. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, I must have, I, I feel like I might have blacked out for a bit because I remember coming to. And um, I remember snow dripping, you know, something cold dripping on my forehead. 
Um, I also remember uh, my best friend asking me if I could move. And I, I remember trying to move and I, you know, I said, no, I can't move. Um, and then that in itself is amazing to me because seconds before then, you know, like before the accident, I was tremendously claustrophobic. And so I know that it was nothing but the hand of God on my mind, keeping me calm and not going into like cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. you know, being, you know, a, a um, claustrophobic and, and then not being able to move and then being enclosed, you know, um, that could have sent me over, but, but God, did a instant work and delivered me from that claustrophobia and gave me peace. Um, I remember being airlifted from the scene to Good Samaritan Hospital. Um, and at the time I could only move my eyes. That's mm. it. I was able to move my eyes and I was talking like this because my diaphragm, you know, everything mm. from my neck down was paralyzed, um, and, you know, and um, yeah, that's, I could just move my eyes. Um, and that's around the time when the Lord gave me the dream and there's more to the dream, but I'll share that a little later. Um, I definitely was, was uh, singing in the dream, but um, yeah, it, it, it um, I feel like I'm, I'm missing a point. Um, what right now, what is your condition currently? Well, they diagnosed me as a quad, mm -hmm. but as you can see, I'm able to, I can move, you know, I can move my arms. I'm able to move my left hand tremendously well, and I will be moving my right hand. That's um, uh -huh. yeah. and, um, I'm able to move each of my legs. I'm able to wiggle my toes, um, God is just amazing. So healing has been happening. Healing has been happening. It has been happening. You know. How have you made? I know this, but this is for our viewers and our listeners. Uh -huh. Because you are a tremendous woman of faith. One, Amen. Of, one, of the, one, of the, one of the strongest women of faith I've ever known. Wow. How have you, how have you maintained that through all of these years? I, I'm sure. Talk to us about, I'm sure there were times maybe depression. God, did you give up on me? Uh, why did you turn your back on me? Why did this happen to me? Talk to us about some of those emotions that you must have felt. I, there have been times. Well, early on, um, early on, I remember, I remember I was depressed, but I, I didn't realize it. And maybe this sounds weird. I didn't realize it until, I didn't realize the severity of it until I was out of it. Does that make any sense? Like I was sad. Mm -hmm. um, I never got to the point where I felt like, why me? But I did feel like I was missing out on things. I, I remember um, around the time of the accident, my father um, seemed like he took ill and, and there was nothing that I could do physically for him, you know, to right. like yeah. help. Um, and that, that was a very low point for me, um, you know, to see, um, uh, so I, oh, there was a point when I didn't want to hear music. Okay. I didn't want to sing because, oh my God, I, I knew it was something. So um, once I um, got I was done with Mary, um, not Mary and Joy. I was done with Good Samaritan. They kept me for like a week. And then they transported me to Mary and Joy, um, which is a rehabilitation hospital. And um, there was a chapel there. And there was a piano in the chapel. And this was like one of my first moments where I realized, oh my goodness, I cannot sing. Um, my best friend had taken me up, wheeled me up to the chapel and she began to play the piano. And I um, 
started, I, you know, I thought it was going to, I started to sing, I, you know, and it was horrible. It sound so bad. And I just, I bawled because I went from doing, being able to do it in my sleep almost to giving it my all and sounding like Kermit, you so know. Was that even a lower point for you than actually being paralyzed? Like I lost my voice. I, I lost what God has given me to do. I yes. sing. Yes. So, and, and you had mentioned a few minutes ago, which I found interesting. It seemed like it was more upsetting to you that you couldn't help your father in his time of need rather yeah. than look at, I'm paralyzed and I'm without some physical things. I can't help my dad. Oh, yes. And then being able to sing, and it sounds horrible, where just two years before you're, you release a CD yeah. you're on the road and you're singing. And that must have been devastating. It was devastating. And I know that the thing that sustained me was um, the, the God's faithfulness, you know, the fact that he allowed me to dream and to dream what would be, you know, um, and my father's resilience, you know, the, 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 you know, that, so with my voice, the Lord reassured me that that you know, I don't, I didn't have to necessarily worry about that because he was going to do what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And that would manifest. And then with me not being able to help dad, um, the fact that helped me, the, what helped me cope with that was his resilience and his, his joy in spite of it. Um, and still being able to communicate with him, um, and in that, the Lord helped me to realize to celebrate what remains. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I say often, you know, it won't always be like this, but Amen. it won't always be like this. That's right. You know, it's like, so enjoy right now um, because it's not going to always be this way. I think that it, goes a long, it, you know, that goes a long way to yes. why you are it's, always smiling. You're always smiling. Have you have you had surgeries along the way, or has this I, been a natural healing process? I have initially I had um, a fusion in my neck mm -hmm. um, for the injury, and then. Um, I had like some extra bone growth removed, but it's been, it's been God. It's been a, a it's been a gradual healing. You know, it's. I, I tell you one that I think, but I think is one of the most miraculous things. And you know, this as a vocalist, uh, it's much easier to sing when you're standing up than sitting down to get the, the, the lung power and get down in your diaphragm and really let notes out. And yet you can, and I've heard you many times, you can sing with the best of them sitting down. That to me is miraculous. Amazing. Because, because you're, you're in a wheelchair, you have some part paralysis and you're able to find these notes. And with this power, that is, has, that's God. It's God. Totally God. Yeah. Totally. She never, she never told me that totally. Yeah. It's amazing. So we're believing for a total healing. Have you had physical therapy, of course, over the years to strengthen your, what, what do you do so that you don't atrophy? Well, I have had physical therapy mm -hmm. um, sporadically. You know, it's, it's not been an ongoing thing. Um, I'm actually going to physical therapy tomorrow. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, it, it hasn't been a consistent physical therapy. It seems like I gain more strength, it, it, you know, I gain more return outside of physical therapy. Yeah. What would you say to someone, Lisa, who is, uh, who is struggling with physical issue or mm -hmm. they're not quite where they want to be in life? They've, they've suffered a setback maybe. Mm -hmm. How would you encourage someone? I would say just hold on um, there's a song that, that 
Shirley Caesar sings, I believe it's her, and she says, reach beyond the break and hold on. Sometimes you have to, um, in spite of what it feels like and in spite of what it looks like, you have to find um, something to celebrate and hold on to it um, and don't let go. And you have to guard your words mm. and guard what you um, allow yourself to say about yourself and, and watch what you hear, watch what you allow people to speak to you um, and then trust God. And, and, and um, you know, I've learned to make my requests, you know, made known to him. And he, I know that he hears me. Oh, yes. And, and I know that his will is that I prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. And so um, having said all that, I just say, hold on, trust God and be open for, you know, the unexpected. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want to ask you this, because we are believing God that you'll get up and walk. And, and we praise God already that you can sing, you're moving your arms. And yes. There's quite a bit of mobility versus the time that you had the accident. Yes. So, so let me ask you this. And I'm sure you've been asked this before. What happens if you don't get out of the chair? What happens if the rest of your life you are where you are? I mean, well... Uh, I'll still glorify the Lord. That's what I knew you were going to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Uh huh. Because he's worthy of our glory. He's no so what. worthy. Yes. He's so worthy. He's so faithful. So faithful. And hey. can I say this too? Of course. Um, I, you know, and I'm being very transparent. Um, I want to talk to, um, there was a point, you know, like some people say, well, you know, do you feel like, why me? I don't feel like, why me? I feel there was a part where there was a point where I felt like things that I had done throughout life contributed, the one I contributed, I felt like I was reaping. Um, Talk to us about that. I felt like I was reaping um, disaster because of some of the mis not mistakes, some of the choices mm -hmm. that I had made. Um, and I want to say that it's important when you do things to confess it to the Lord. Oh, yes. And to, because He forgives. And then it's, it's so important for you to forgive yourself. And, and, yeah. that's where I was. I dealt with, oh my goodness, after the accident, it, not right away, because I talked about the peace that really did surpass my understanding Yes, mm -hmm. that the Lord, you know, enclosed me with. But after a while, I want to say maybe two years later, condemnation um, really set in mm. and condemnation is a barrier it, it can block what God has for you, you know, like, um, because you, I, I, you know, I can't speak for anyone else, but I felt like what I had done was bigger and, and, you know, hindsight, this is, it's crazy to feel that way, but I felt like I didn't necessarily qualify hmm. for, um, mercy. So you, you're beating yourself up. I was things. beating myself up. And you it's easy to do that because we lose the fact that God is a forgiving God. And you're He's right. We're, we're told, confess your sins and there's yeah. forgiveness there. You know, uh, I just pulled open my Bible because you were talking about, it. you know, this verse as well as I do. Romans 8, 1 says what? Therefore, there is no, now no condemnation yeah. for those who are in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. We've, I think we've, all, if we're honest with ourselves, we've all been at that place where you say, oh Lord, I did this and I yeah. did that and I'm, I repent for that and I'm sorry for that if we, if we mean business with God. But I think what, you're, what I'm hearing is you were thinking that some of the choices you made may have contributed to, in other words, it was God's judgment or it was a punishment upon you 
for behavior or thoughts yeah. or I felt that way. And how did you get through? Because obviously that's not, God doesn't have a little scorecard up there saying, uh -huh. today uh -huh. Lisa is going to be in an auto accident. That, that's not the God we serve. Yeah. We do reap what we sow. But uh -huh. how, did you, how did you get past that condemnation on, onto the other side? It was, i tell you what, I, um, I had several confidants. I, I spoke with um, my best friend. I spoke with... Um, Another really good friend of mine, um, she's out of state. She lives in Atlanta. Then I spoke with Byron. I don't remember if you, you I, should know Byron. Yes, I sure and, remember Byron, yes. And I, I, remember, I remember talking to Byron um, and he said, you know, I was telling him, you know, I feel bad about this and, you know, and um, he said, so what you're saying is what, you did was bigger than what Jesus did you know so what you did that was wrong mm -hmm. outweighs what Jesus did to correct your wrong and I was just like <laughs> wow and and then another thing um that was just one thing that really really stuck out and then um um seem like during that time every preacher that was on tv was talking he they were quoting the verse that you just quoted and i was just like even with that i was just like oh but i shouldn't have, you know and he was just so relentless with his mercy and with just wanting to love on me and hey let it go there's therefore now no condemnation Right. you know, let it go. And so um, it didn't happen right away for me. You know, it, it took some time for me to forgive Lisa. Um, but I, you know, I, I can't tell you, I wish I could tell you, oh, it was this day when, you know, it finally hit. It's a, it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. I look back on some things in my life, some things I've been able to forgive myself easily. Some things I still knock myself upside the head and say, what a knucklehead you were. Uh -huh. How could you do that? How could you think that way? Why would you do these things? And we have to realize there is complete forgiveness in Christ. Yes. There is complete forgiveness. There's complete redemption in Christ. And if we're in Christ, you know, these bodies that are breaking down on us will be glorified one day. Yeah. We have an eternity to spend with yes. Jesus and all the other believers. And so yes. a lot of the things that happen here on earth, yes, they can be annoying. Yes, yes they can be frustrating. But in the, I think you said in the grand scheme of things, we're just here for a little bit, little time. We're just here for a little bit. A little bit here. And then we've got all of eternity. Yeah. Spending, doing things. So. And then, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go on. I'm, we're good. And that was the whole mission of Jesus. He knew that we were going to jack up. He knew that <laughs> within ourselves, we were yeah. just on a slippery slope, yep. you know, and, and he saw, he knew that I was going to jack up and he still wouldn't come down from the cross. He saw oh. it. Hold Before on. I was, you know, he had a, he had a see yeah. it through because he wouldn't be our Messiah without that. That's right. Uh, had he come down, you know, like the one thief said, why don't you come down, save yourself and save us. Had Jesus done that, it's all over at that point, uh -huh. you know, um, what do you, what do you think is some of your goals of the future? What would you like to accomplish as your life is moving along? I'd like to go back in the studio and record some more music. Okay. Um, I'd like to get married. Okay. Um, I don't know, you know, who he is or where he is, but I'd like to get married. Um, My brother's taken, by the way. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> um, let me see. Um, I would love to go like on mission trips. I would love to do that. Um, and yeah, I just, I just want, I want everything that God has placed in me um, to manifest and the things that have even lied dormant 
I want those things to be resurrected and and um, exhausted. You know, I want I want to be um, used by the Lord. You are being because you 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 still sing at church and. God allowed you to come on the program here in spite of all the technical issues we had. At the yes, beginning. thank you so uh, much. It's the broadcast is going out around the world for whoever is going to be looking at this. And I'll make sure, of course, like you get a copy of this too. Okay, thank but, you. Uh, yeah, I, I sure hope that God will give you all the desires of your heart. Of course, if you want to be yes. married and you want to go on mission trips and you go back in the studio, I would love to help you in that process as far as the studio goes. Can't okay. help the marriage part. But as, soon, as far as the studio and if I can provide music for you or anything, I'd be glad to do that. Because Thank you, you. You have a calling on your life and you, Thank you. you have a gift. And to be able to praise the Lord sitting in a wheelchair, you are, you're an inspiration. And I, I, I'm humbled talking to you. Wow. To God be the glory. I am. You know, God called me to preach many years ago and I didn't want to do it mm -hmm. uh, because I had other plans for my life. My thoughts now and have been for a number of years is something that Dr. Charles Stanley said, Lord, I want what you want. Yes. What you want for me is what yeah. I want for me. Yes. And my my list of wants anymore. And as I look back on my life, my list of wants were not nowhere close to what God eventually called me to do. And yeah. so I'm glad that God kind of picked me up by the collar and said, OK, Thomas, no, 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 no. You're not going to have the life you want. You're going to have the life that I want for you. Yes. And that's where and that's where my head is at. And I believe that's where yours is, too. And yes. So we want to pray, Lord, whatever your will is. Yes. Your will is. Uh -huh. Amen. I want to thank you for being with us. Uh, anything you'd like to share with our viewers, any kind of final words you'd like to leave with us? And also, will you do this? And I know you know your Bible really well. Do you have a favorite scripture or two that you would share with us? Absolutely. Good. Romans 8 and 28. There it is. Yes. For we know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. His purpose. There you go. Yes. His purpose. Yeah. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Hold on. That would be my, my word. Hold on. Trust God. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. He's the, you're not going to find anyone more faithful than God. You just He's quoted just, my life verses. Proverbs about, 3, 5 and 6. They're my, that's what I live by. Yes. Uh, we have to trust him. And we can't rely on our own understanding because we get no. down in the mire too much. So we acknowledge oh, him all things and he will direct our paths. Yes. Lisa, if somebody wants to reach out to you and contact uh -huh. you, what is the best way to do that? Um, well, I'm on Facebook mm -hmm. under Lisa Jones. I'm on Instagram. Um, oh, my word. What is my Instagram? <laughs> uh, that's horrible. Yeah, you have a pretty common name. So there'd be a lot of Lisa Joneses to look through, I would think. I think it's Lovia, L-U-V-Y-A-214. Try that, folks. And see if, see if you that's might it, it, on Lisa's page. But they can reach you through Facebook also. Can you tell you us the me. name of your CD again and where people can purchase it the, the name of the cd is his promise and it's on all of the digital outlets and it's out on the, your name lisa jones it is uh -huh. okay that's wonderful yeah. well sister-in-law yes <laughs> brother -in -law. blessing I, i'm glad we were able to finally coordinate a time that we could do this me too and we and we beat the devil down we have to see each other more yes covid really put a damper on a lot of visiting and a lot of traveling for people. I agree. You know, it's, it's so uh, please say hello to the rest of the family for me. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. God bless you. You are God loved. bless you. All right. Love you. Okay. Friends, thank you for watching Life Talk. If this has been a blessing to you, please feel free to share this broadcast or any of the broadcasts because this is for the glory of God. 
And so yeah. thank you for being here with us. Next Thursday, Lord willing, I will be live again with another guest. So thank you for being part of this live talk. Lisa, talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye.